to electrical content time. I tried to do this on Monday, but my phone won't work. It's also very hot in here, as you can tell. And I've got hay fever, so it's not ideal for the ballboard, yeah? This is from the post bag. People send me questions and I'll answer them, yeah? Timothy Fordham says, I'll read this out and set the scene. Would you be willing to answer this technical question for me? If you've got a string of solar panels wired together, is it likely that you could receive a significant electric shock from the positive lead at the end of the string of panels? I'm fully aware of the dangers of DC arcing, and if you unplug MC4 connectors when the current is flowing, so I'm not asking about that issue. Obviously, the leads at the end of the string could have 4 to 500 volts DC on them, or more in some cases, but if you were to accidentally touch the live end of only one lead, would you receive an electric shock or not? I don't think you would receive an electric shock because the electricity wouldn't have a return path. If you only touch one lead, the electricity won't flow to Earth for your body because the negative lead of the panels aren't connected to Earth. That's an assumption. The question is what's going around in my anyway. So he wants to know if you touch the positive leg of a solar array, will you get an electric shock? Now he says he doesn't think you will because the negative is not connected to Earth. So what I'm going to do is look at a bit of Earth in because that is a dangerous assumption to make. And in the control panel, that's an extremely wrong assumption to make because there is a thing called grounding and earthing and neutral earthing and all sorts of stuff. I'm not gonna get too technical about it, but I'm gonna draw it on the whiteboard because that's where it'll make more sense. So let's go and have a quick look at this particular one and see what we can make of this. Earthing is very, very complicated and very, very complex. And there's all different avenues you can go down. So the assumption is made there that you wouldn't get electrocuted is quite a dangerous one. I would avoid making that assumption all the time. Because part of doing isolation and working with things that may be live is knowing where they're live and two is how they're earthed. Because the fault path is where you're going to get the... That's what's going to hurt you. We're talking about a fault path now. We're talking about if you touch something live, it will go through you to earth and complete a circuit. That's what electric shock is to a human. Also, you could come between live and neutral, but that's unlikely or face-to-face -face unlikely. I think it's fair to say... If there wasn't an Earth, if everything was an Earth-free location, there'd be a lot less tripping and a lot less electric shocks. But the electric shocks that people did get would be much more severe and they would die because Earthing is a complicated situation. But you can always draw it and follow it with your finger like this. So that's what we'll do. In this drawn here, there's two solar panels, yeah, could be 50, doesn't matter. A negative to the inverter and a positive to the inverter. You'll notice that I've shown an inverter on the DC side, an inverter on the AC side. Undoubtedly, on the AC side, it's going to have an Earth. It's going to have an Earth reference. I've used some ground mark panels here. They will certainly be on a fre Earth frame that's connected to the ground because otherwise, how would it fucking stand up? They could be on your roof on rail. Now, I'm not sure if that rail's Earthed or not. I know it is at my house. It's ground to Earth. I'm not sure what the rules are on that. Maybe one of you solar boffins can measure me and tell me and I'll incorporate this video. But in this case, we're saying the frame's earthed, the inverter's earthed on the HV, on the, on the higher voltage side, the main side, but the panels are just sat there being all paddly with just this DC circuit between them, which I'm now going to draw here in a much more easy to read fashion. Now I look at the little drawing look, it's the same thing. You've got two solar panels connected to what is effectively a load. What you'll notice is at nowhere is there a connection to earth. So what he's saying is, if I broke this wire like that, and I touch that into that wire, will I get an electric shock? Well, as far as I'm concerned, at this particular drawing, the answer is no. Because even though I will become charged with the voltage that is in that, when it gets to Earth, it will just try and charge the Earth. And then when it gets into the Earth, it's got no way of getting back to this neutral. Therefore, you won't receive an electric shock. If you grab each end, if you break it there and touch between those two wires, you would get an electric shock. So yeah, if it's an isolated system, which in this case it is, the answer to would you get an electric shock is probably no, as long as it adhered to the principles that are laid out in that drawing exactly. So in that situation there, we're looking very much at the situation of what happens when a pigeon lands on a power line. Well, when a pigeon lands on a power line, it is effectively at the same potential as the power line. And there is no way of the potential that then is within it from the power line getting to Earth. That's why every time a pigeon lands on the power line, it just doesn't fucking explode. If, however, two pigeons land on two separate power lines on a three 
on a three-phase system and they try and kiss each other, they will both definitely explode because the potential of each one is whatever the potential is, 33,000 volts, 7,000 volts, whatever, between them so they will explode. So in this situation, because there's no return path, you will not die from touching one of the conductors to Earth unless you touch between both of the conductors. But what we have to consider is, what if the neutral was grounded? And you're probably thinking, why would you do that? Well, that's a thing. You often ground the neutral of a supply to Earth. So just before we move on, if you've got a DC circuit, a circuit meaning a circle, that's totally isolated from your Earth, you cannot get electric shock off it because you can only get electric shock between its two poles, its pos and its neg. Touching it and going to Earth will not affect you. If it's neutrally grounded though, what you'll see now is you can draw a line from here to here and between that, there's a potential. You can draw a line from here to here and between that, there's also potential because you've earthed the neutral down. People will wonder why your earth neutral's down. Let me show you some of those reasons. Hope that helps. Hope that answers the question. The fact, simple fact is you can't be sure. Also, even if it isn't grounded down, if there's some slight fault in these panels and they were leaking to Earth through a fault path that was not meant to be there, like, I don't know, that phalanic breakdown or whatever solar panels are from, yeah? There would be a path and you would hurt yourself and it would hurt while you were dying. I've drawn a typical industrial control panel, yeah? What we've got is we've got a 230 volt supply down the bottom. And you've got a fuse, a fuse, a fuse, a protected device, yeah? Then you've got a 24 volt DC power supply, a 110 volt AC transformer to give you a 110 volt control supply and a 24 volt DC power supply. Then you've got the normal 230 kicking around, yeah? So what I've done is on each, on the primary side of each transformer, there's a protected device. That is protecting the transformer or the power supply, which is an electronic device with rectification in. On the outgoing side, I've got a 24 volts DC power supply, the 110 volt DC power supply, and the 230 volts DC, all within a metal enclosure. Now, there are two things that can go wrong here. One is that any of the power supplies can short themselves down to the casing. That's not good. So you've got a fuse here that protects the outgoing ways of each one of these supplies. The other thing that happens a lot is people want to test these supplies up here. Now, you might want to check the 24 volt in the panel to see if the panel's working. You might want to check the 110 or the 230. It's highly likely when you have these multiple supplies in the panel, you'll end up wanting to test one. Or just testing what voltage something is. In this particular arrangement at the minute, we would get the power supplies required and we'd have overload protection for them. The problem is, if you took your tester and tested, what would you test between? So if I take my test to look like this look, and I want to test the voltage on the inquiry side, if I go there, I'll get 230. If I go there, I get 230, and I go there, I get 230. So I know all my incoming supplies are okay. If we then go into the panel and start testing, if I test here, I'll get 24, 110, and 230. Brilliant, that works, doesn't it? What if I accidentally go to this neutral and to a 24 volt? What will I get if I accidentally go to the zero volt of that or the zero volt of that and the 24 volts of the power supply? What will we need to show? And this is where the danger comes in. You'll show nothing because there's nothing there. Because no circuit exists between the 24 volt positive rail of the power supply and the zero volts rail of the 240 supply. So that means every time I went to a panel, you'd have to identify the neutral he's working on at the source then go around testing. Every time you went on the 24 volt, so I'm on the 24 volt neutral here, every time you put your live probe on a 24 volt cable, your meter would say 24 volts. But every single time you put it on this cable, it'd say nothing. And then there it'd say nothing. And this is a problem because you would start thinking that certain rails and power cables were dead when in fact they were live at potentially hazardous voltage, in this case of 110 volts and 230. So we need a way we can basically go to Earth and just test any cable and get a reading on your meter. And because of that, we need to make these supplies non-isolated. So we need to link each one secondary side to Earth. Right, so what you've got to do is, and what you'll find in panels, which some people find out, a lot of people don't realise this is the things, yeah? You take the negative, 24 volts, you connect it to the Earth, the main Earth. Then you take the negative, of the secondary side of your 110 and you connect it to earth 
your main earth. There's only one earth. You take your secondary supply off that one and get to the earth. I've made a slight error here, yeah? You wouldn't earth your neutral of your untransformed voltage as I've shown the far right side, yeah? That neutral earth link already exists at the panel. We don't generally apply earth neutral links in panels. I just got carried away thinking there's a transformer in it. But that earth neutral link exists somewhere else. I've just shown it here for clarity and because I'm fucking stupid sometimes. So then all the zero volts become common. So then you can take this probe and put it on any neutral of any of the supplies or simply just connect it to earth with a crocodile clip. Then you can take this lead. When you go on 24 volts DC, you will get 24 volts DC. 110, you'll get 110. And 230, you'll get 230. If you go on the zero volt, you'll get zero because it's zero because they come down and they actually are zero. So then between the supplies, they're zero with their appropriate voltages showing on the positive leg. So hopefully that starts, I don't expect to understand that straight away and get your head around that straight away, but that starts off problem. Now you start seeing that these could be batteries. If you've got 48 volts worth of batteries, you can put the neg down to earth so you can test them. You can even earth it in the center, which is a bit of a weird one. So earthing is complicated. If you built a panel and didn't put these earth links in, so each supply was isolated, you would create a panel that's not dangerous to test, but you need to be absolutely aware that it's not zero volted to the earth. Or you need to be aware that the zero volts aren't to earth because to test it then, you have to be with the secondary supply neutral and the supply testing for. So next time you go to a panel or see something, just look at the power supplies of the transformers and you will probably see that they are earthed up to fuck. On a solar farm, everything is fucking earthed to keep it the same potential. And sometimes the panels will be isolated as DC. Sometimes they'll be negatively earth DC. And you need to be aware of this. If they're isolated, they're isolated. You won't get electric shock because what you're stood on is never going to get round to where they are. If they're earth, what you're stood on is absolutely going to make a path. So yeah, just be aware. I'll lead on with this on something else. I want to talk about 110 volt sense tap transformers and safety isolate transformers. I put a couple of videos up the other week to pique some interest in them. But yeah, get used to the fact that all the secondary sides of all your power supplies and transformers should have one leg down to earth. Unless they're specifically designed as isolate supplies. But generally, for you non-specialist people just doing normal stuff, they won't be. Anyway, that's the end of this video with all these corrections for errors. Don't kill yourself, you fucking twat.